Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a epic, enormous, huge, gigantic DVD and Blu-ray update. And it's such a big update that I split it up into parts. Not only for my own sanity, but for yours as well. Because, to be perfectly honest, the video would be way too long if I tried to do it all in, all in one part. So, um... These are all things I picked up fairly recently over the past few months or so. Um, a lot of them I got like insanely good deals on, some really cool stuff. A lot of stuff I've been looking forward, looking for for a while and other cool gems and stuff like that. I got these from various different places, uh, pawn shops, thrift stores, DVD resale stores, a bookstore that also sold DVDs. Um online purchases so on and so forth so this is only one part there will be a second part which will have more i know it's crazy uh but um i'm looking forward to this because there's a lot of cool stuff here so i'm gonna start off with this it's the alfred hitchcock masterpiece collection now this is a DVD box set from Universal. Goes for a decent amount of money, like 40 something bucks or something, I think, or maybe even more than that, depending on uh, what retailer is selling it. Uh, what, not really necessarily a retailer, but sometimes a retailer, what, de depending on what reseller is selling the set. I got it for 10 bucks, which is a crazy good deal at, uh, at Everyday Music, one of the Everyday Musics in, uh, Portland, Oregon. So, what's what's cool about this is that it opens up like here, okay? So, it opens up like that. And that's what you have the discs and then you put it in there. Now, the discs themselves are in these paper cases that include all of the films. Now, I'm only going to show part of it, part of these cases because this is a cool case in terms of presentation, but it's not very well put together because it's an absolutely unbelievable pain in the ass to get certain ones out and to get them back in because of the fact that they're made out of paper and the fact that this box is apparently too small for these sets. So I'm only going to take out the ones that are one of the ones that is easy to remove. So, for instance, you have this one, which has uh, Shadow, of the De Shadow of a Doubt, Saboteur, Rope, and Rear Window. This has all of Hitchcock's films. It's a crazy good deal for $10. I mean, all the ones that are considered to be the masterpieces, anyway. The ones that are, like... Or even some of the ones that aren't considered to be masterpieces. But just the ones that are the most talked about. And it has a decent amount of features in all of them. I actually like the the way that these uh, sets look. I like the paper look. It's something different. And it's got all the posters on there. So this one has the birds, Marnie, Torn Curtain, Topaz, The Trouble with Harry, The Man Who Knew Too Much, Vertigo, Psycho. I already have Psycho, but it, I mean, it's the Masterpiece Collection. It, had to, it definitely had to include Psycho. I also already have Vertigo and The Birds. Uh, Saboteur, Shadow of a Doubt, Rope, Rear Window, Frenzy, Family Plots, and a bonus disc, which I believe has a um, AFI Salute to Alfred Hitchcock, Masters of Cinema Alfred Hitchcock, and then a booklet that talks more about what's in the set. So, I mean, for $10, it was a steal. I mean, this is like a ton of different movies for like 10 bucks. so... If ever get around to doing a Hitchcock marathon, I'll definitely watch the uh, films in this uh, Masterpiece collection. Now, this is actually a custom DVD I'm working on. The reason why the cover looks so weird, it's green, but then like kind of blue, is because my printer kind of went wonky and uh, apparently was not going to print the color anymore. I'm going to wait until I get more ink for my new printer to print off a new uh, case, which, uh, not necessarily a case, but a new cover that will have green all the way through. 
And the reason why I made this is because I had been getting into Extreme Ghostbusters lately. I was watching it on Hulu, and I really liked it. And a friend of mine and a subscriber, uh, Brad, he uh, sent me the UK release of Extreme Ghostbusters. And so I was originally making my own case and my own set, but he sent me the, the DVD, the two-disc DVD set from the UK, which has the first 13 episodes. So I decided to throw out the one, not necessarily throw out, but uh, save the other discs for later, maybe send them to somebody else. And com I will complete this set later with Hulu rips, so I have the Extreme Ghostbusters collection. But this one has, uh, th now, thanks to Brad, I have disc one and disc two, which they all have episodes from the show. And it's the first, first 13 episodes of the series. So, thank you, Brad. I'm, I'm going to keep this case, though, because the original case, the cover art was kind of lame. It's like Slimer, and it was just really generic and bland looking. This one has the logo and everything, and I like the design. So, I will complete this set in the near future, and then I will have the entire series. And who knows, maybe someday I'll talk about it. So, once again, big thanks goes out to Brad. I also want to thank Brad for uh, sending me, it was a, a Predator t-shirt. And I think, believe, I don't, it's not in that drawer. Well, just one second here, folks. Yeah, he sent me this. It's a Fright Rags t-shirt. Really cool. With the Predator on it. Always wanted to get a Predator shirt, so thank you, Brad, for that. That's really cool. That's awesome. And he also sent me some more uh, D CDs that he burned some music, some soundtracks, and a few more WWE, WWE cards and stuff like that. So big thanks goes to Brad for sending me uh, those items. This is a TV series I've been curious about for years. I didn't get my hands on the Image Entertainment release on DVD when it was still affordable. Now it's like extremely out of print and rare. But I managed to get my hands on this. This is Mantis, the complete series. So this is actually a Australian release. And uh, apparently it is region free. I double checked it. It's region free. So if you see this one out, and about, or if you see this one online somewhere, pick it up for if, especially if it's an affordable price, because it is region free. If you're a fan of the series, or if you're curious about it, because I actually got this for cheap. Uh, Twenty-five bucks is cheap compared to how much the image release goes for fifty, sixty, sometimes even over that, even hundreds of dollars. So, twenty-five dollars for this is a good deal. It's a pretty cool set too. It's. Got no features or anything, but it's a nice steel book case for Mantis. Uh, a show that, in a lot of ways, was ahead of its time with an African American superhero lead who's a paraplegic who uses an exoskeleton to walk around and to fight crime. Uh, Sam Raimi and Sam Hamm created the series. Uh, Robert Tapert and Sam Raimi also produce it. The show also is infamous for having one of the worst endings of all time, but for my 90s uh, comic book uh, live-action superhero collection of TV shows, this was a must-have, and I'm really glad to have it finally. And the picture quality is better on this set than anywhere else on the net. Any of the bootleg sets on I offer, any anywhere else you see this show, the picture quality is crap. It's these old Hulu rips that are not that good. This is easily the best quality you're going to find either on this set or the out of print image set. I think both of these are actually out of print, but that's the best you're going to get is uh, from that particular set. And I got some more TV shows. Uh, picked up uh, Mr. Show, heard a lot of good things about it, and I got them all in one place. Well, not necessarily. I, I got almost all of them in one place. I got these two at a, at a record shop, and I got the last season at Buybacks. So we got the first and second season of Mr. Show, and I got this complete third season of Mr. Show, and then I got the fourth season of Mr. Show. 
Now, buybacks, they recently cheaped out on the stickers, so they're a real pain in the ass to take off. So I'm, I'm just going to be keeping stickers on for buybacks releases from now on because they're such a pain in the ass to remove. So, yeah, there's Mr. Show. I also got Tracy Takes On. Uh, this is a season one of Tracy Ullman. It was an HBO series. Heard some good things about it, so I'm curious about it. Another show I heard good things about. Got for cheap. It was like two bucks for like the entire first season. So this is Millennium. This is the complete first season. Uh, Chris Carter, who did the X-Files, did this. He create, helped create the show. It uh, stars Lance Henriksen. And I really like Lance Henriksen. So curious about that series. Uh, I also got Jack of All Trades with Bruce Campbell. A friend of mine was a big fan of this. And I remember watching a few episodes and getting a kick out of it. So... I'm glad to add this to my collection. I like Bruce Campbell, and this is this. Is, I remember having a good time with this show. So, got that for pretty cheap at like a thrift store. I got this at Walmart. It was like twenty-five bucks or something, or twenty. Uh, I got it because, to be perfectly honest, I don't mind the show. Uh, as you can see, like I did a review of the last season before Roseanne's infamous tweet. Uh, I got this because it has the entire series, it's got a bunch of features and stuff on it, and this is the kind of thing, now knowing about the controversy and whatever, that this might end up like, this ultimately might be the last release of this show to ever be released officially. So, this is something that could end up going in price in the future. Also, this is a good deal for the entire series, and I like John Goodman, and... Uh, the other members of the cast. I mean, for me, I, I enjoyed the show for John Goodman, Laurie Metcalf, Leslie Gorenson, Sarah Chalk, uh, Sarah Gilbert. That those are the those were the people that I enjoyed the show the most, and for and Roseanne was you know hit and miss for me anyway. So, but it was it was a, it's a good it's a good get, and it wasn't that expensive. So I got She Wolf. Of London heard about this show and um, yeah it's got uh, Kate Hodge who I believe she was in one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films if I remember correctly I could be wrong though could be dead wrong on that um, and uh, yeah this is She-Wolf of London which is a complete series so I've heard some decent things about it my cat decided to uh, make an appearance what are you doing Nippus the boy. All right, so we got She Wolf of London. Then I got Giver Bio Booster Armor, the series. This is the latest anime series of the show. I love Giver. I've heard about the show, but I've never seen it. So I got a good deal on this. So looking forward to checking this out because I'm a huge fan of this character of Giver. So that's it for TV shows and anime for right now. Now I'm going to get into just a bunch of random DVDs. So, got The Dark Backward, which is a film that is written and directed by Adam Rifkin. Judd Nelson is in it, as well as Bill Paxton. It's like a weird freak show movie. I had no idea this had a special edition. Yeah, of all the movies that get a special edition, The Dark Backward. It's really curious, Sony. But, but cool. Cool. And then I got a Modesty Blaze, because someone was talking about, like... Why haven't they made a female James Bond movie? Like, they already did. It's called Modesty Blaze. So, I saw this and somewhere, so I decided to pick it up because, hmm, female James Bond, all right? I'd be curious to see that, see what that's like. The Ruddles, All You Need Is Cash. This has a crazy amount of celebrities in it. It's a parody of the Beatles it's got special appearances by George Harrison, Mick Jagger, Paul Simon, Ron Wood, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, and Bill Murray. Uh, I picked this up because it's you don't see this very often. I don't think it's like super rare or anything, but you don't see it very often. Um, and I'm not super big on the Beatles, but this this might be fun. Also, I I'm, I just. When you have, this is the type of cat, I mean, you got Eric Idle, uh, Lauren Michaels executive produced it, so that's the other reason why I wanted to get it, because 
Lauren Michaels executive produced it, and you have a bunch of the original cast of SNL in there, and I'm a huge fan of the uh, original Not Ready for Primetime players, so that's a big reason why I got it, and it, it wasn't that expensive either. This is out of print, and I got a heck of a good deal on this. I think it was like paid like three or four bucks for it, and it goes for over 20 bucks used on Amazon. This is uh, Bad to the Beach. Uh, Frankie, Annette, uh, Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello were known for doing uh, beach movies in the 50s. And 30 years later, they did a film in the 80s, which had cameos by Gilligan from Gilligan's Island and Pee Wee Herman. And I think that's the beaver. I think, I think that's who that is right there. And from leave it to beaver and stevie ray vaughn and just like just fucking randomness i've never seen the film but i mean i'm curious about it considering you got peewee herman who's making a cameo you got this you got gilligan from gilligan's island it's just craziness then i got a horror film called the quiet ones the trailer looked kind of decent so i've been curious about it Got a classic, Robin Hood Men in Tights, which honestly, there are parts of this I really like, but then there's other parts that I'm kind of eh on, like, it's one that I definitely want to revisit sometime if I do like a Mel Brooks marathon, and I, I actually do want to do that because I'm a huge fan of Spaceballs, and I haven't reviewed that yet, and I love that movie. In Dreams, a film by Neil Jordan that I've been trying to get my hands on for years. So glad to finally get this. Really curious about this one. Um, not not only because of the cast, but because of the concept. Robert Downey Jr. plays a serial killer. That's something that's definitely interesting. Way out of his comfort zone, and so I'm curious to see how he pulls that off. I got Myra Breckenridge, which is notoriously considered to be one of the worst movies ever. And this has been out of print for a long time, so I got a good deal on it. And it's a really crazy, weird movie with Raquel Welch and uh, Mae West. Hollywood Shuffle, Robert Townsend film. Very revolutionary for uh, black comedians and for black cinema, really. Hollywood Shuffle is a, is a really funny movie. It's a classic. Island of Dr. Moreau, just for uh, curiosity's sake, I know about the insane making of of this, so I think it would be an interesting double feature to review this and, and to review uh, Lost Souls, which is about the making of this film. Uh, how Richard Stanley originally did the movie and then the movie was taken away from him and then the whole craziness that was going on in the set. Memoirs of the Invisible Man, of an Invisible Man. This one came out recently from Shout Factory, but I've never seen the film. Actually, I did. It was a long time ago and I wasn't that fond of it. And this is I remember this being one of my least favorite John Carpenter films. So I was like, I'd rather just pick up the DVD. I don't really care about it on Blu-ray. Just for the, you know, just to finally complete my John Carpenter collection. This is the last one, I believe, that I needed, that I, oh, other than Dark Star. Dark Star is the only other one I, I need now to complete my John Carpenter collection on DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, I don't really count the, the, the film he did for Masters of Horror. That's like a short film, but I guess I, I would need that as well. But other than that, I think he did two. Did he use cigarette burns on like another one? But uh, other than those, Memoirs of Invisible Man was like one of the last ones I wanted to, I, I wanted to get for the collection because I only had it on VHS. Got Zorro, The Gay Blade, George Hamilton and Lauren Hutton. It's one of those forgotten about Zorro movies. Yes, there was a Zorro movie where Zorro had a brother who was gay. <laughs> This definitely would not play uh, well today. Uh, I don't think this would ever get made today, considering uh, the subject material. It's uh, directed by Peter Medak, who did uh, The Changeling, which which is crazy. <laughs> You're like, and this came out, I think, a year after The Changeling. So after The Changeling, Peter Medak directed Zorro, 
the gay blade. I I know that that's that's just nuts, isn't it? This is out of print. Got it for a good deal at a record shop. It's, it's one of the original Image Entertainment releases. This got a re-release, I believe, for through uh, an archive collection from someone. I forgot exactly who, who it was. But, um, yeah, this is definitely an out-of-print release, so this is a good deal. And, to be honest, I watched, I, I checked out the picture quality, and for a film, for a DVD this old from 2001, it looks fantastic. It really does. It's surprisingly good. Volunteers with Tom Hanks and John Candy for the John Candy and Tom Hanks collection. Also, this is a film that apparently features the WSU fight song and I am a student at Washington State University Vancouver so I'm curious to see it for that reason I think I saw parts of this on TV years ago and was like eh on it so it was cheap so I was like okay for the collection Lion King the two disc uh, special edition on DVD haven't seen this since I was a kid got this at the thrift store and it was like only like two bucks, which is a good, really good deal for, for The Lion King on DVD. So, got The Lion King. The Getaway, which was actually sent to me by my good friend Matt. My good friend Matt, uh, Rambo F for Life, he surprised me. And he sent me The Getaway. Um, he also sent me a spare copy of the Lionheart Blu-ray from MVD that has like an audio error. And then he also sent me Robocop 3 on Blu-ray, which I do have somewhere... And I'll probably show that in the next uh, part of this video. But i um, been wanting to get this for a while because I like the trailer for this. One issue with this disc, though, it's one of those early discs that has, like, non-anamorphic widescreen. So it's, like, this really tiny, scrunched widescreen picture. And you have to, like, zoom in in order to get it to look at all watchable. And even then, it's... The, you can see the artifacts, and it's not that good of quality. The laser discs that I just picked up, uh, I picked up before I got this, probably will end up looking better, which is shocking. Um, but there's also a Blu-ray of this that's out uh, overseas. But um, still, I'm really glad to have this for the collection, and so whenever I get around to reviewing it, I can show it on camera. This is honestly a pretty forgotten about film, and a pretty forgotten about remake. This is actually a remake, and it's a remake that a lot of people forget even exists. Finally got my hands on this miniseries, Peter Benchley's Creature, with Craig T. Nelson and Kim Cattrall, dealing with a man shark, and I've never seen it, but I've always been curious about it because of the concept, and Craig T. Nelson, who, I'm, who I am a big fan of. Buybacks had two copies of these that they were asking 20 bucks for, which is too much money, so I actually got this off a Facebook group for 10 bucks, which is still, you know, a decent amount of money, but it's, it's cheaper. It's, it's a lot cheaper. It's the cheapest I've ever seen this film for anywhere online. So, and this won't get another release more than likely. Actually, I think it did. It got a release on Blu-ray of all things. I think by Kino, uh, or all of films. I think it was all of films, but I'm fine with having the DVD because I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if I want it on Blu-ray. I got this for Space Mutiny. Th this is some of the worst cover art I've ever seen in my life. Firehead, eh, fire crotch, whatever. Um, but Space Mutiny, I actually get a kick out of. It's like a so bad it's good movie for me with Red Brown. So, but that cover art, I mean, fuck, that is some of the worst cover art in the history of man. It really is. I got Earthquake. Uh, this was a revolutionary film for the time in terms of the effects. Uh, I think it won an Oscar for Best Visual Effects in 1974. For the disaster movie collection, I'd love to do a, a 70s disaster movie marathon one of these days. The Poseidon Adventure, Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, The Towering Inferno, Earthquake, uh, some of the other ones that Irwin Allen uh, was, was uh, responsible for and produced. This is definitely one of the more infamous ones. And it, it, it used Sense Around, which apparently this also has the Sense Around track, but I don't know how that's going to work if you don't have the seats that vibrate that go along with it. Because Sense Around was a, a special gimmicky audio format that was created for this that uh, 
at certain points in the film the audio would get louder and then and then your seat would would shake as if you're triggered uh uh but um yeah definitely curious about checking this out someday for the for the disaster movie collection i frankenstein i like Aaron Eckhart and it was a dollar that's that's the that's the only reason why I got it beyond skyline haven't seen it uh skyline I remember seeing and not minding it it was a dollar this is a pretty decent deal for it man with a gun which I saw the trailer for looked all right decent cast here Michael Madsen Jennifer Tilly Gary Busey Robert Loja Kill Command. I like this film. I already reviewed it on my channel. This is honestly a much better version of Predator than, like, it's trying to be a similar sort of movie to Predator than Predators or The Predator, to be perfectly honest. Uh, solid low budget movie. Kill Command. Death Squad for the cast. It's probably a piece of shit, but I mean, Danny Glover, Daryl Hannah, Rutger Hauer, Michael Madsen, Stephen Baldwin. Like some low budget attempt to be the next Expendables. How to Train Your Dragon? Because I've actually never seen this film. I've heard good things about it, but I've never gotten around to seeing it. Twice Told Tales with Vincent Price. It's a horror anthology. As you all know, I'm a big fan of those. Route 666 with Lou Diamond Phillips and Laurie Petty. Been trying to get my hands on this for a long time, and I found this at a place I'd never been to before. Went there uh, with a friend of mine, and uh, found a decent amount of stuff. And this was one of the best finds for me because I've been trying to find this for a long time, and I got it for a decent price. Because anywhere else I was seeing this, it wasn't going for like three or four bucks or anything like that. I actually, I think I paid five for this, but it's worth it though, because it was about ten dollars cheaper. Than anywhere else I was seeing it. Act of War with Jack Scalia. I got this because it was super cheap. But also. This quote on the back. Rivals the best of James Bond. A must see. Drop dead thrilling excitement. But here's the thing. There, there are quotes here. That are supposed to be reviews. But there's no critic that they are attributed to. There's, there's, no, there's no source. It's just random fucking praise. I've never seen this before on 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 a on a cover or on the back of any movie that I've ever owned, where it doesn't even attribute it to anybody. It, it's just it, it's just made up praise that they pulled out of their ass to try to sell the film. A good day to die with Cindy Poitier. Such a pretty decent uh, low budget western. Pretty solid. And I'm not a big fan of westerns, so when they're solid, then let's do some of the better ones. From a whisper to a scream, this is sent to me by, I believe his name is, I don't know if he wants me to give out his name on uh, on camera. I believe we're, we're subscribers and, oh, actually he subscribed to my channel and he contacted me on my Facebook page a long time ago, asked me if I wanted this and a few other things. So he sent me them a, a, a while back. So he sent me this from A Whisper to a Scream, which I've been trying to get my hands on because I'm a big fan of anthologies. And I remember this being pretty decent. And I know there's a Blu-ray out there by Scream Factory, but I'm fine with the DVD. Cover art though, like what is this? Like, Is this Pink Floyd's The Wall 2? Um, but yeah, big thanks goes to him for sending that out to me. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that your name escapes me. Like I, I, I know he sent me a letter and his name might be on it, but I, I know his name starts with an A like Anthony or Andrew. I, I don't want to, I don't want to like butcher his name but I, I gotta say you know definitely thank i'll just i'll just call him mr a so thank you mr a for uh from a whisper to a scream this the great satan which is a compilation of random clips by everything is terrible which is a youtube channel that i'm subscribed to and i saw the trailer for this and this looks fucking crazy 
And I'm actually looking forward to checking this out one of these nights. This is fucking insane. So I, I'm looking forward to that. He also sent me a zombie. The, 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 uh, I think it's a 1979 film. Uh, which is also known as Zombie, you know, with an I, the uh, Lucio Fulci film. So he sent me the original Blue Underground Blu-ray. So I'll show that when I get to the Blu-rays, which I'm almost to that point. Creature, which is, uh, my opinion, a pretty underrated alien ripoff. This looks like it's a dirt poor cheap release. And yeah, kind of is. But here's the thing. This is the film in widescreen. Like, this is the best picture quality you can get for this film. Because this actually uses the print that was used on the out-of-print uh, release of the film that was uh, sold to the public in limited quantities by the director, William Malone. I think it was like a director's cut or something. This doesn't have the features that that disc has, which is known as t uh, which was released under the, fight the title Titan Find which was the original title for this, but it does have the transfer. So if you're a fan of this film, pick this one up. It's on Amazon. It's like seven bucks. It's really affordable. And it's got the, uh, the film in widescreen and pretty decent quality. So even though it's a cheap, looks like a cheap Jack release, it actually has a decent print. I know go figure, right? That's crazy. But I definitely wanted to let people know about that because I've been trying to get my hands on this for a while. I only had it on VHS and the other releases were just crap. So I, I didn't want to buy crap, which was like worse than my VHS. So this was really nice to see, to see the the uh, a low budget company that actually delivers and brings a decent product despite the despite their uh, shortcomings. Got this because I was curious about rounders, could care less about swingers, but hey, for, for the collection, sure. The Gift, Jason Bateman film. I believe uh, Joel Edgerton wrote and directed this. He's also on the cast. Curious about this. Heard some good things about it, so decided to pick it up. The Mad, Billy Zane, Shallow Grave with a young Ewan McGregor and Christopher Eccleston. Arctic Blue for the Rucker Hauer collection. Pennies from Heaven, which is a musical slash drama based on a UK, I think, film of the same name, based on a... Uh, yeah, it's an adaptation of, of, of a miniseries that was really popular in the UK. It's a tribute to uh, singers and dancers like uh, Fred Astaire. And I like Steve Martin. And so this is one I've always been curious about. And I've always liked this cover art. I think it's pretty cool. And what's crazy about this is you have like dance numbers and stuff but you also have i guess christopher walken stripping christopher walken strips in this movie uh that's definitely uh not something that you would expect at all but definitely curious to see if, how, how much of a train wreck that scene is dickie roberts child former child star for for the david spade collection surprisingly this was hard to find in widescreen. Everywhere else I would go, it only would only be in full screen, and the widescreen release would be more expensive. So I'm glad to get this for the collection. The Magnificent Seven. It was a dollar. I like Chris Pratt. I like Denzel Washington. The Commuter. Liam Neeson. Haven't seen it. Friend of mine, Matt. He liked it. It's also uh, it was also a dollar. I love that it says E H on it. I wonder if that's if that's the person's reaction to it. They're just like, eh. <laughs> Confessions of an action star. This just seemed like a potential so bad it's good classic, like the room of try hard meta action mockumentaries starring a total fucking loser. The Cold Equations with Bill Campbell. I got it for Bill Campbell. Doesn't look like much, 
but I got it for the Rocketeer. And then here we have Southpaw, which I love. I think it's a great film. I personally thought it beat the ever-loving shit out of Creed, but it got an absolute smacking by the critics for some reason. And Creed got the pass. The Disturbance for the 80s horror collection. Some uh, foreign film called uh, Calavare. Uh, I got it because decent reviews. And I don't haven't really seen this very often anywhere. But I just, I just kind of like this cover art. I, I think it's pretty artistic and cool. Pool Boy, Drowning Out the Fury. I like Kevin Sorbo. Don't mind Danny Trejo. The concept interested, interested me. It's a, a movie within a movie. It's like a spoof of some kind. Yeah, it sounds kind of interesting. Got this for a dollar, which was a steal. This is the out-of-print 2 to special edition of hardware. Um, I think there was a recent Blu-ray release or something that came out. But I'm good with, with the uh, two disc of the film. The complete collection of Billy Jack, which I actually got at Walmart. It was a pretty good deal. It was like 10 bucks. It's uh, got all of the Billy Jack films, including the one that I believe wasn't even finished. Or at least part of it. Or is that only on the Blu-ray? I don't even think they include that on there because that's that wasn't even finished. Um, but this has The Born Losers, Billy Jack, Trial of Billy Jack, and Billy Jack Goes to Washington. So the Billy Jack collection. So that's it for the DVDs. I'm going to get the Blu-rays here in a sec. Just pulling them a little closer. So got this at Walmart. It was a good deal. 15 bucks. Planet of the Apes Legacy Collection. So this has all of the Planet of the Apes classic films. So it has the all of the Planet of the Apes films from the 70s. So you have Planet of the Apes, which I think was actually a 60s film. So you have Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Conquest for the Planet of the Apes, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, as well as a ton of special features and uncut, unrated versions of Conquest and Battle. And I know a friend of mine, I believe, well, I think his name was Will, but I think he might have changed his name or something. He originally, he wanted me to try to get a hold of these uncut, unrated versions of Conquest and Battle so I could send them to him in the UK, but I could never find a rip of them. So... I was trying to see if I could find this and then find a way to be able to rip it. So now I can, now I have it, but uh, if I'm going to rip any Blu-rays, I'm going to wait till I get something like an Elgato uh, capture card. So then I can get like the best possible picture quality. Um, so yeah, it's part of the Apes collection. I got the 40th anniversary release of Grease. I actually really like this film. I grew up watching this movie. Um... This actually has the original theatrical cut of the film and uh, for the first time on home video. And uh, it's a pretty cool looking uh, case. It's got this sort of faux uh, leather look to it. So, yeah, I really like Grease. I think it's a classic and it's one of the best musicals out there. So, looking forward to watching that again sometime. Maybe if I do like a musical marathon. Another film I really like with, an, with a pretty cool case, The Fifth Element. This is the Signature Series, and uh, this has the film remastered, I believe, in 4K. It looks amazing, and uh, this is a pretty cool case as well. So, it's got like a little book. It's got some booklets and stuff. I got it brand new at buybacks for like 10 bucks. It was a crazy good deal. Then we have the Changeling. I'm so glad to have this. This this has this is the release uh, from Severin. Uh, not not from Severin. This is the release from Second Sight. Se Severin did a release in the U.S. This is the U.K. release, and I'm going to confirm that it actually is region free. 
I don't think they confirmed that officially, but I know it is because I tested it out. So it's a reversible cover art. I'm so glad to see this on, on Blu-ray. Um, been waiting for that for a long, 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 long time. And this has a new 4K scan of the film, plus a bunch of other features. The 7 release had audio errors. They've been fixed by Second Sight. Also, the 7 release, the CD didn't work. The soundtrack CD. Second Sight has fixed that. So, if you ask me, I personally feel Second Sight's release is, is superior. Because Second Sight... You get stuff that you don't get with the with the Severn release, like this booklet. It's it's uh, which has a uh, a vintage interview with George C. Scott and like some writings about the film, and as well as pictures and stuff like that. It's really cool. It, it's in a lot of ways, it's like Arrow. It's like a very high quality, solid Arrow video release. It's also got a poster for the film. It's got the original poster, uh, which it's it's mul it's it's two sided so you can put the original poster on the wall or you can do the uh new the new uh cover art that was created for the for the blu-ray release so yeah i per i do i personally feel this is a superior release because of the fact that all of the audio errors are fixed the cd works properly uh presentation wise it's the same print but it doesn't have any of the same errors. This hardback is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the bonus booklet also makes it better than uh, the 7 release as well. So yeah, for me personally, as a huge fan of this film, I would say if, there, if this is still available and you can still get it. Like I remember when I got this, I pre-ordered it. It was pretty cheap actually from Amazon UK. If you can still get your hands on this, get your hands on it. If not, I guess go with the Severn release or the original. You know, there's the normal bare bones. But yeah, uh, Second Sight knocked it out of the fucking park with this release, in my opinion. One of their best releases uh, that they've done in a while. And they're a pretty solid company anyway. So we got Deadpool 2, the Super Duper Cut. I finally saw the Super Duper Cut. The violence is great. The extra bits of violence is really good. Some of the extra jokes don't work, though. I hate... I absolutely do not like the scene where Wade reunites with Vanessa in heaven and they use some slowed-down version of Ashes. It doesn't work. It kills that scene. Uh, the theatrical... Uh, the sequence in the theatrical cut with Take On Me, a slow, slowed-down a cappella, Not really a cappella, but unplugged version of that song is so much more effective. And I still think, like, the best version of this film is a combination of theatrical and the super-duper cut. Uh, the extra added violence is great, but some of the other stuff isn't as good. And, yeah. But, still really love this movie. I love Deadpool 2. It's one of my favorite films of this year. This is a really cool release. This is one of the Target exclusives. It's got a children's book. Not suitable for for a children's book that's kind of like an adaptation of Deadpool, Deadpool 2, artwork and stuff like that. That's a fun little bonus. The book's not that funny, though. It's a little disappointing. I personally feel they should have consulted Ryan Reynolds and had him write it, because you can tell it's not Ryan Reynolds who's writing it or any of the people who are doing Deadpool that's writing it. Some other person was just tasked with writing the jokes. That's not as funny. Got one of the anniversary editions of Hocus Pocus. This is the Target exclusive, the Digi Book. I know there's a Steel Book out there. I I wanted this more than the Steel Book, even though it looks like the book, the spell book from Hocus Pocus book. Uh, but uh, this has the original cover art, the original poster art, which looks gorgeous, and it's it's a slip case, so it has this is looks like that, and it has Binks on the background. On the back there, it's got the disc, which does have the feature app from back in the day, and some picture-in-picture -picture mode bullshit, though. Like, there's some exclusive behind-the-scenes footage and interviews that are on this release 
but they're in a picture in picture mode thing. I'm like, Disney, just release it separately and give me an audio commentary. Like, one step forward, two steps back. But at least they're trying. You know, there's a gallery book here. It's got uh, some little bonus stuff about about the film and little information about like some of the special effects and, and so on and so forth. As a fan of the film, I'm a big fan of Hocus Pocus. So this was a release that was a steal, really. It was like 13 bucks, so it wasn't that expensive. So it was a good deal, and it's, at least Disney's starting to give a shit with their releases and this was actually released separate from their movie club, which is surprising. So maybe they might do one for the Rocketeer with actual features. That would be nice. Not not keeping my hopes up, though, for it. Cut the Rhode Islands. Got it because I'm going to start doing a re, uh, remix, um, a complete a redesign of the box office fails series i'm going to call it box office bombs and i'm going to talk about a bunch of pirate films and one of them is cutthroat island the dvd is absolutely terrible it's not an anamorphic widescreen uh and it's not really fair to the film to watch it on that particular version so i got it on the blu-ray and it is a definite difference gattaca special edition i love this film it's one of my favorites so i'm really glad to get that on blu-ray Here's the zombie Blu-ray 2 Disc Ultimate Edition from the original Blue Underground release, which uh, was uh, sent to me by Mr. A. I'm going to call him Mr. A. Thank you, Mr. A, once again. Uh, upgrade uh, upgrade to my 2 Disc uh, uh, of the film on DVD. Adventures of Ford Fairlane. This is a German release from NSM Records. I'm going to say this to fans of this film. Pick up this release. It's not that expensive. It's like a little over 20 bucks shipped from Germany. Uh, the original uh, release that was released in the U.S. is out of print from Anchor Bay. And uh, this one has all of the features that that release doesn't have. So this ports over the audio commentary track from the DVD as well as the featurette from back in the day and the music video and the trailers. So this has a transfer that is just as good plus all of the extras that are not on that release and the original poster art which is so fucking awesome it's such a really cool uh addition to in comparison to the u.s release i've always loved this cover art and and i i i can't i can't sing enough praises to nsm records for this this is really cool so if you're a fan of, of ford fairlane and you don't have the film on blu-ray pick up that release it's definitely the best. So now we're almost to the end here. Showing the True Lies custom release again. Just, I can't sing enough praises to this release. It's fantastic. Um, Roger Rabbit on Blu-ray. Who framed Roger Rabbit? I got this at Walmart in their, their bin for five bucks. It was actually on sale. It was like five dollars. So that's a steal. For Who Framed Roger Rabbit, brand new on Blu-ray. Um, so yeah, I haven't seen this in a long time. I'm a big fan of it though, and I'm looking forward to revisiting it one of these days. Another Disney film I'm a, I'm a big fan of, as you all know, The Rocketeer. I finally got this. I needed to buy stuff for uh, my Disney Movie Club uh, reward system. So I needed to buy certain uh, releases so I can... Fulfill my obligation that I signed up for. This wasn't one of them, but I bought a couple, at least one at full price to be able to uh, fulfill an obligation. So then I decided to also buy some more and it was on sale as well. So I got a decent price on it. I'm a, I'm a ginormous fan of this film. And even though I have a custom release that has this rip on there, it's not the same as actually having the real Blu-ray. So even though it says 20th anniversary edition and there's no fucking features on it whatsoever, I'm still glad to have it because I am a huge fan of it. And what I did is I took the bonus disc that I made for my, my uh, custom release, which has the featurette from back in the day, excitement in the air, uh, another, I believe another little making of thing, a bunch of TV spots and trailers and interviews from back in the day. 
So I put that bonus disc on here. So now this is as close as you're going to get to a definitive special 20th anniversary edition of the Rocketeer. The thing is, though, I had to add an extra disc myself because Disney is lazy. So, um, yeah, that's a Rocketeer. A Terminal Velocity for the for the Travisine collection. Fate of the Furious for the, the uh, Fast and Furious collection. Dune, I have the DVD, which has the, the TV cut on it. But I love this film so much, I had to get it on Blu-ray. And then I have Outbreak, which I, I'm also a huge fan of this one. And I forgot that this was even on Blu-ray. So this is an upgrade over my DVD. And I guess I like it so much I'm smacking myself in the head, apparently. I'm just running out of a little bit out of steam because... Can you blame me? For fuck's sake, there's so many fucking things. Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, the unrated cut. Saw the trailer for this, looked interesting. And I've been trying to get my hands on the rated cut, for, unrated cut for a while. So, got it for cheap. And then the last two Blu-rays I'm going to show you are this one, The Company of the Wolves, which is a fairly underrated werewolf movie with some really cool makeup effects. And this is um, a UK release, overseas release. I don't think it's gotten a Blu-ray release in the US, which is really too bad. This is something that screams like Kino Lorber or Scream Factory. So we'll see what happens. What's crazy about this is there's nothing have you ever seen a spine that does not have the movie title on it? Well, ITV Studios does that here. So if I put my if I put Company of the Wolves on my Blu-ray shelf like this, there's no way I know what it was. Because it just don't even have the fucking title on the spine. The last thing I got was the five disc complete collector's edition of Blade Runner on Blu-ray. They upgrade my DVD. This this is out of print. More than likely not going to get another release. And it was a decent price. Twenty five ninety nine is actually a pretty damn good price for this. And it's got disc one. It's got disc two. Disc three. Yeah, a bunch of yeah. So it's got tons of features on it. And I really like the film. So really glad to get my hands on this set. So on that note, that's it. That's it for this uh, first part of this epic, enormous DVD and Blu-ray update. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm out of energy. I need to get some lunch or some dinner. I need to refuel. And then uh, stay tuned for more reviews and the second part of this update. And as always, thanks for watching. And I will see you later. See ya.